Welcome to Rachel Scale Modeling. For my next build, I'm going to be building this Airfix Supermarine Spitfire Mark VB Scale 1 to 24. This will be a straight out of the box build, nothing special, it's quite an old kit, and I've been told that possibly I'm going to have some fitting issues with it. So I'm not planning on doing anything special with it. So the the kit itself is basic with about four sprues in it and um, the instructions again are basic, they are an old kit, yeah. sorry it is an old kit. So I'm going to dive into it now, not much more to explain on this kit, so let's uh, jump into the build. Right, so to begin with I'm painting the engine block and that's going to be painted in Rebel 9 and um, using that as the base colour for the engine block. Once the engine block is dry, um, I'm doing some of the detailing now, which is mostly done in um, the aluminium colour 99. So quite a bit of work yet to be done. And just cleaning things up and uh, painting a little bit of detail before I join it then at the end of it I will go over it with withering powder and so on but then I'll, it's just um, getting all the components together on the sprue again and painting the aluminum for the exhaust ports as you can see the um, engine blocks are waiting to be put together so now um, I've got the aluminum paint out I'm painting the struts for the landing gear and on the rest of the sprues I'm just going to go around and paint all the little bits of aluminium that I can and then when it starts all dry we'll get back to the building. On to the uh, cockpit. I'm painting the um, pilot's chair here. Now this is a very basic cockpit. There's not much in it at all. Uh, but there is uh, room for you to scratch build and um, detail it up if you wish. I didn't because I'm doing straight out the box build. O on the engine there is a bit of details um, that uh, can stand up nicely like the uh, mounting for the engine. You have the option to, to have that showing or not. I was going to show it then, I decided not to. So um, the cockpit itself, as I said, is enough to do. Uh, just painting in the basic colours. I'm putting the engine block together and um, Everything so far is fitting really well. Um, these are just a, a, a simple cement job um, fitting to place. Again, carrying on with the engine block, um, the rocket covers and everything going on. I did find on this kit the um, some of the instructions are not 100% clear. Um, be, be sure to have a look where you're putting things on the block. It doesn't really affect the model itself. But, um, you, you know, you, you want to get them into the right position. So just make sure that you contact points before you cement. Onto the instrument panel. Now there's no decals for the instrument panel, so you have to paint them. But you get a nice uh, clear uh, piece of plastic to, to do this. Uh, I, I painted at the back of them silver, then all the dials are white. Then I used a very thin brush to paint in the, the needles. And, and so forth. It takes a bit of time, but with practice you can get it done well. Just putting the final assembly of the engine block together, and um, n nothing major going on. Rocket covers fit very well. Um, onto the, the side panels that, and the fuselage. Those are painted in Aquacolor 66, which is an olive grey. I uh, decided to do olive grey instead of green. I think it stands out a little bit better. Once the uh, cockpit is, is painted, time to assemble it. Again, no issues. The uh, connection points were really clear and everything went in very well. Attaching the chair to the um, fuselage support beams, I found this very difficult. Um, it's better if you do this kit to put the pins in all the seat onto the fuselage first, then marry it up. If you do it the other way around, it can get re really tricky. Now that the um, 
penis right i'm going over with tamia's weathering master c and using the gun metal on a brush sharpener just to go over the raised areas to give it a metallic look so it's no time to place the parts inside the fuselage or all the levers and gears not a great deal to put in as i said before oh well, that's most of them in now so it's time to put in the uh, main cockpit now so just putting in the the seats then the um, foot brace and things will go in again not um, not difficult to put in feel straightforward into the struts that hold the engine block a little bit tricky to get in and all surface put the end, engine block in itself so while the engine block is trying just got a clamp top there I'm just putting in the colour for where the rear landing gear will go. Assembling the landing gear is really simple. Um, just a, a couple of struts to be glued together. Um, and the wheel itself is actual uh, aerobrie plastic that comes with the kit. And the wheel itself has a nice deep recess to fit into. So before I put the fuselage together, just got to put the um, tail fin on. Um, a little bit of cleaning up to do, nothing major. So I decided to bond the fuselage before I put the tail on. Discovered I had enough room just to push it in. So I've married both parts up and I'm just uh, putting some cement down the seam. And once it's all in, it's just a matter of clamping it up. So I'm waiting for it all to dry the glue. Um, I'm going on to the nose cone which is painted in Rebel 314 which is, which is beige. And I've already painted the prop blades yellow before the black goes on. Okay, the clamps are off and um, everything looks really good. So I've just uh, a little bit of tidying up, sanding down. Back to the props. Um, just put a little bit of time you tape on the tip. And then draw some black gloss number 302 down for the actual blade. Painting the base colour on the um, underside of the wings, the lower wings. And I'm using my own colour for this. This is the colour I mixed up for all um, British World War II aircraft. It's a very light grey green um, in a certain finish. So as you can see that's almost done. That's the first coat done. Time for the landing gear to be made up now. Uh, very similar to the rear landing gear process. You may have noticed two machine guns are in the picture. Um, they, they go onto the wings, but I, I decided to cut them in half in the end, so that's why I haven't shown them being built. Um, you can have them fully showing or not. I, I decided to close up the, the model entirely. Before you bond um, the wings together and put everything in, now is a good time to put in your yellow stripes, your flash stripes at the front of the wing. It just makes it easier to put them in at this point. Building up the um, undercarriage, now half the stuff that you can put in here you don't really need to put on. Uh, I, I took a lot of it back out because it was hampering with the process of bonding the wings together. Because as I say you can have them in the open position if you want to put a lot more work into the kit. So in the end I am just ended up with half the machine guns and um, obviously the undercarriage wheels. So I'm just painting the inside of the wing now for um, for what's going to be showing and um, again that's in the um, olive grey colour. Popping in the wheels, um, again wearing quite easily, these just click into place. Now I, I did discover if you didn't burn the cement on them you could actually have them up or down depending on how you want to display at a particular time if you weren't bothered about the covers because they're so tight they they will swivel up and stay there if, if you wish this is the panel covers these are the parts that you can leave off if you're going to leave it open not unhappy with everything uh, just a simple case of bonding putting it on with uh, holding with some clamps Again, depending on how you displayed the kit, um, is whether you, you make modifications. You can either leave these parts on or cut them off. Um, I just decided to cut them off. 
plus a win and one still should have cut off it's just a simple case of bonding them onto the wing back to the undercarriage and just painting the the cover for the wheels and now it's on to the um, tail wings the aircraft um, I'm just pre-painting before I bond and attach them and as you can see the wings and flaps get bonded separately before I put them all together I'm using Rebel 65 here to paint the um, lower wings. I did actually paint the um, undercarriage on the wrong side, so I had to cover that up. So I decided just to paint it all on the, on the dark green first before I put the um, camouflage in. I generally do the other way, grey then the green, but this time around, because I screwed up, I put the, the green in first. So now it's all dry, just putting the flaps onto the wing and again just a light colour on the bottom um, just to see where I'm going to be painting the main camouflage on the side because most of this I'll get um, taken off again when I come to bond the fuselage to the wing. Then to put the last sign panel in and um, step into the cockpit. And now I'm placing the exhaust ports into the engine block. Now the holes for these were slightly bigger, uh, smaller than they should be to, to fit in. So I, I had to increase the size slightly by I put my knife in and twiddling it around to increase the diameter of, of the hole. And once they were in, I uh, done some weathering with the um, Tamiya Weather Series. I used Bunt Blue on series D and um, the bond red. It's time now to bond the, the main body and wings together. Um, went in surprisingly well. Now some say they have uh, fitting issues with this. I didn't have many at all. Just a slight gap. It was simply held down by four clips and one F clamp. Didn't take much at all. Jumping over to the canopy, it's time to paint them. I'm freehand painting this with Rebel Aqua number 65, the green colour. Feel free to mask this off if you want to. Um, I, I, I don't, I prefer freehand painting. If I do go over the lines, I just use a cocktail stick to um, rub off any paint that's gone over. Moving on to the engine bay again, just uh, putting on the top cover. Onto the undercarriage with the um, the um, air intake and so forth. I've got the um, top cover under a heavy clamp. Uh, I found that better than just a light clamp. Moving on to props, just uh, pushing the blades into the recesses there. Um, again, they just uh, pushed in very easily. Small amount of cement required, if any at all. Put on the side panels for the engine. As you can see, I've already put one on. Just putting the second one on now. And they just slide up underneath the exhaust ports and click in. I did find it easier to um, take off the location uh, pins on this. Uh, just to, to get them to sit in there. And I needed a little bit of a tight clamp to get them into position. And uh, to complete the prop, uh, just putting in the nose cone. No glue on that. But on the rotor, it put a little bit of glue on and just press together. And now again back to the underside of the plane, just putting in all, all the little covers and um, the air index and so forth. And for the last, putting in the the covers for the wheels. This is on place, I'm just um, painting up the covers that I put on. Adding a tiny amount of filler now for, for any little gaps. Again, I'm using Villaggio uh, plastic putty for this. Um, put a little blob on, spread it with a matchstick, and then wipe off any excess. There we go, like that. And for the last patch to attach on the underside is uh, this little thing here. As you can see, I had a little bit of filling to do. Um, where the cover and the main fuselage met. Um, there was nothing major, just a little bit. I just went a bit overboard on it. So I filed it down and then uh, painted it over with the main base colour of um, 
level 43. Once everything is sanded down and dried, um, I'm putting in the um, camouflage now. So for the tailwind, oh, as I said before, I done it the opposite way around. So I'm just uh, placing in the grey and then moving on to the actual green on the main body. Um, how I do this is I take a, a small flat edge brush, paint along the outline that I want to do. So just uh, move the, the brush along to whatever shape you want and then just fill in using small um, even strokes. So as you can see I'm start at one side then just work my way over um, onto the other side that adds the camouflage sweeps around the plane. And once the camouflage is dried time to put on the main gun. And now for a coat of varnish so I'm using Pledge Clear Floor Varnish here. And now that the varnish is dried, it's time to put on the decals. Um, there's not that many to put on. A few on the bottom. The decals have dr uh, dried overnight, so I've put uh, a little bit of varnish over them. And now it's time to weather. So I'm using the Tammy Master Weathering Set, and I'm using Set b and i'm using the suit just to dirty up the decals and the dust streaks and th things like that and once that's done i'm using winsor and newton matte varnish and put this on fairly quickly after the um pigment goes on because it will blend in the uh, pigment um a bit better while it's um still um settling in into the kit this will give it a, a better streaking effect and now I'm putting on the wire for the aerial which I'm using here the um, fishing line so I'm just measuring it up cutting off a bit a little bit of super glue on each point and then secure it well that brings this build to a close as you can see everything's on and done the matte varnish is dried I prefer matte to silk um, there'll be a, a, a small slideshow at the end of this video. In the meantime, why don't you check out my other videos? Um, leave, feel free to leave any comments you like. But for now, thank you for watching. Bye bye.